Pickaxe. Hello, welcome back to the Review of Death, a Doctor Who podcast, your fortnightly home for Doctor Who news and reviews. It is. I'm Matthew Coppolo. You are. This is Peter Garrett John. I are. He is. Uh, and we is ranking new series Doctor Who. Series. We is. We is. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is a bit of a, I guess a bit of a, an extension of the Jodie Whittaker ranking that we did. Yes. Uh, because we had a tier list that looks a bit like this. Yay! Uh, and we were speaking about our, our favourite and least favourite Jodie Whittaker episodes. Yeah. But I thought, what if we did... I was lambasted for that. People, were you? People were like, what is Matt thinking with these rankings? Wow. I thought I was within my rights to say that. Well, you're well within your rights. Yeah. Doesn't mean you're right, but you're well within your rights. I mean, I'm right as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> it's all subjective, folks. Let's not hate each other here. It's only yeah. a TV programme after all. Um, I'm glad I didn't say it's only a children's TV programme yeah. after all, because people get really pissy about that. They do, don't they? Which just goes to show me that nearly everybody who <laughs> likes this programme is a fucking man-child. If they can't... <laughs> or a woman-child. If yeah. they can't admit that it's a children's TV series that they like. Yeah. I mean... Just look at some of the graphics that we've got underneath here. I mean, series 10 especially. Yeah. If that isn't a children's TV series, yeah. I don't know what is. I mean, the thing is, I always like the Target, on the back of the Target books, mm. where it's like the... the, the children's own series. series. That adults adore, or whatever it is. Yeah. That's lovely. It is. And I think that's, that sums it up. I don't think it's ever been said better than by Target. Absolutely. You know, like... It's a bit like Star Wars in that people who take Star yeah. Wars a bit too seriously yeah. and think, but it is just like knights in space though. Yeah, and George Lucas has said this yeah. himself. He's been like, you know, it, it was, it's just a film for kids, really. Chill out, you guys, yeah. is what he said. Anyway, yeah. let's um, rip to shreds. Uh, yeah, we're not going to be chilling out. <laughs> be... Hey, look, you know, if anybody wants to hire us for anything related to the official TV series, we're just characters. Yeah. You know? Yeah. We're just sort of, we're, we're, we're over-exaggerated versions of ourselves. Exactly. That's there we it. Go. You know, don't take it personally. So, series two is shite. Uh, and we'll go into why that is. Really? And no, I'm joking. I was going to say, um, um, how are we doing this? Are we going in order? Uh, yeah, let's go in order. I mean, it got a bit mucked up. So, yeah. in actuality, let's start from series one. Yeah. Which is going to be somewhere over in this vague direction. So, now, uh, S obviously is like God tier, A tier, brilliant, B tier, great, C tier, fine, D tier, series six. Shit. <laughs> series six? Uh, I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, series one then. Series one. I think I know where it goes. I think I know where it goes. Where do you think it goes, Matthew? Right to the top, I it's think S. It, I think it's S tier. Yeah, it's right. superb. Um, I'm trying, and, and this also includes like specials and stuff as well. Yes. Yeah. Um, so uh, this would be Christmas Invasion as well, I guess, as, as part of all this. I, I think no, I mean, no other series had to do it in the way that Series One did. Maybe yeah. Series Fourteen is going to be as close to the sort of Series One effect yeah. as we've had. No other series has had to hold so much on its shoulders. Yeah. And no other series has stood up as tall all these years later as yeah. Series 1. It's so bold in everything that it does. It is so bold and, you know, they're just... They're not tentative about stuff. It's just like, this is what Doctor Who is for the 21st century. Unashamed. And, you know, you're going to love it. And we did love it. And, I mean, the fact that we have a further, what, 12 series down there to talk about is purely because this was so frigging good. Absolutely. You know, when I see people who say that they don't like series one, I I just can't can't understand it. It is bonkers. It is bonkers. I, I, and you know, we've we've got a so we've got a new girl in the office mm. and I came in the other day and I haven't been in the office for ages. And you and, said, Hello big tits, looking for some action. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that, no. Um <laughs> And what did she say? Uh I think but she said was... no, didn't she? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Blasted lesbians everywhere. She should have they should have or something. Or something. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but she, uh, I was at my desk and she came in and I can't remember what it was about now, but, and she said something and she, she sort of stopped in her tracks and she said, is this the guy, the Doctor Who guy? I was like, yes. Did she you have like, the moustache? 
No, I didn't have the moustache. I'm surprised she recognised you then. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I was like, yes. And she's like, oh, I like Doctor Who too. And I was like, oh, wow, really? And I was like, who's your favourite Doctor? And she said, Christopher Eccleston. Good on her. And I was like, well done. And she said, why? And she said, well, it, she said it's David Tennant for the episodes. She said, but Christopher Eccleston's personality, mm. I, I prefer, you know. And I was like, well done. And she said, why? And I said, well... David Tennant's is a bit of a basic bitch out. <laughs> so, <laughs> fucking hell. Well, let's get on to that. And she laughed, but... Um, <laughs> if that got you laughed. Then she punched me. <laughs> right. Um, um, right, seriously. But yeah, Eccleston. Yeah, Eccles Cakes. What, I mean, that's what I was trying to say, is that, yeah. you know, I don't know how old okay. this girl is, early 20s or mm. whatever. And she, you know, Eccleston. She he, is, he is, he is a, Doctor Who. He's a universal Doctor Who. He's fab. Like, everybody likes Eccleston. I don't yeah. think there's somebody out there who could probably say, hand on heart, yeah. he's my least favourite iteration yeah. of Doctor Who. I have to say, probably at some point, I have to say he was pretty low down on my list. Right. But that's only because I think when you take it from the perspective of Doctor Who being cravats and yeah. receive pronunciation and techno babble. I was going to say, honestly, the only thing we have ever criti criticised that Doctor for mm. is his costume. And actually, at the time, it's it, marvellous I mean, I mean, for, for it, what he is and what exactly, he's doing. Exactly, you know. I think now, if, if, a, if a new Doctor wore that outfit now, I think we'd be a bit more like... Oh, mm. why are you doing that? Mm. But then it completely made sense. Even though at the time we were a bit like, what? It, it, we learned to understand why it needed to be that outfit. And as of recording, so this is, this is going to go out sort of mid-April. It's currently towards the end of February. We've been looking at images coming out of, of location recording. The kind of first images we've had of Shooty in action in his costume. Yeah. Sorry, Shaft in his costume. <laughs> Now, do you think that we're having the same reaction to Shooty's costume that we had with Eccles Cake's costume, in that it's kind of jacket, something underneath, trousers and some shoes, <laughs> trousers. and that's kind of it? Yeah. And it's sort of that kind of, but is it Doctor Who? Yeah, I think we are a little bit, uh, but it's practical. Very much so. I love the trainers. Yeah. Those like kind of classy trainer brogue kind of things that are going on. Yeah, They yeah, look yeah. really cool. Uh, right, seriously. And obviously Billy Piper was amazing. And gorgeous. Because we want to. Because we want to. Yeah, that is so... That, that, that turned up on Twitter the other day and I was like, God, that just feels like a another world that... Like, did that happen? There's a... So when we're in the flat and we're doing sort of packing stuff or whatever, that we have a, a 90s, 2000s mega mix right. that we listen to in the flat. And every so often, because we want to, we'll come on. Jesus Christ. I'm like... She, she was a Doctor Who. I know you keep telling me she was a Doctor Who companion. Yeah. And she was, a, yeah, okay, fine. But every time I hear it, I'm just like, God, yeah, that was yeah. that was a thing. Yeah, but uh, I saw some great Series Four pictures of her the other day, smoking a fag. Really? <laughs> yeah, it was amazing. That's hot. Right, <laughs> Series Two. But it would be if she stubbed it out on you. I mean, that might be. That might be that might That's be your, your own thing. thing. That's your own <laughs> thing happening saying, that there. That might be your own thing, but um, Series do with me. Two. Um, yeah, you had quite the reaction to series two. But do you know what? When I look at the list here, I mean, you're, you're obviously, uh, yeah, do you know what? We're going to have feelings as we go through it uh, for kind of later to mid yeah. uh, series stuff. Uh, are you totally against me going here? Is that about right or do you think it should be higher? Right, let's think. New Earth. Bit shit. Yeah, tooth and claw, very vanilla. It's okay. Uh, uh, School reunion. Gridlock no, no, Grid series three. Oh yeah. Whoops. School, School reunion. reunion. Fine. Cool to have Sarah Jane back. I rewatched it the other weekend. I yeah. bloody loved it. It's so good. I, I, well, I'm looking forward to going back then. In that okay. case. Uh, so, uh, so the Go School the reunion. Go in the fireplace. That's great. Pretty good. Uh, Rise of Cybermen, Age of Steel. I like it. Uh, Impossible Planet, Satan Pier. Brilliant. Uh, the. Um, the, the one with the wire. Idiot's Lantern. Yeah. That's all right. Fine. The finale. No, there's Fear Her, yeah. Fear and Her. Love and Monsters. And Love and Monsters. Love, well, there's that's, a, that's tanking two it. Of, and, then a yeah. bit of, and then I think the worst Russell finale. Wow, really? Mm. Really? Mm. Over the Master one? What, over Series 3? Yeah, I don't no, like the finale. That's a three-part finale. That's really good. Yeah, but it's got the, it's got the Jesus Doctor. But that only happens in the last sort of five minutes. I know, but then it all just rewinds and none of it happened. I mean, it happened for 
the Doctor and his friends. Uh, and Martha that, that, and her family who are scarred by having been put into indentured servitude. Yeah. Um, would you really put it up into B? If it, I mean, we ha- I, we'll, 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 we'll I tweak think, some stuff. But... I, think, I think it's mid. Mid? I think so. Okay. I would, I would personally put it mid. Because, okay. the, I mean, I've been doing a lot of dolly rearranging lately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And when I was putting all the Series 2 figures up on the shelf, I was like, oh, this, this is a good story. But They're it like, got the most coverage. Yeah. When we get to Series 8... What? what is there? Five figures of Peter Capaldi in yeah. different t-shirts. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, yeah, there's some good stuff. I, I mean, I don't know. We'll put it there. Oh, see, I just feel C seems a bit sad. Well, well, let's see. We'll leave it there. Okay, series three. Did you, did you put the font on these as well? Yeah, I did. Yeah, it's good. Thank you. Uh, it's um, Axe For Me A Book, which was the was... font for uh, the Jodie Whittaker era. Yeah. Um, wasn't that so exciting when we got we sent got the, the, the style guide? The style thing. guide. Man. I don't know if I still have it. Uh, I think I downloaded it on my computer at yeah, home. Yeah, I think I, have... I did have it, and then my computer at work died. And we so. and, and we got all the different the floating yeah. diamonds that disappeared for a while. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, right, series uh. three. I'm going to let you just instinctively put it where you think it should go. Uh, okay. We should be saying for audio listeners where we yeah, put where we're, things. Yeah, where we're putting all of these. And these. I think we have so far. Yeah. So series one is S A. Tier. Uh, S, I can't read. <laughs> series two <laughs> is B. <laughs> and series three is S as well. Excellent. Yes, I totally agree with you. Yeah. yeah. It's fabulous. Um, it's the, yeah, I mean, those two are my top, top new series, Doctor Who. Yeah, I don't know if any other seasons are going to scratch into S tier. Yeah, I don't think so. Um, it seems like series two is a bit of a reaction to series one in the, okay, we've lost the Doctor, so we sort of need to reintroduce this Doctor. Yeah. So he becomes a bit vanilla. He becomes a bit generic. We need to do this th- this love story with the Doctor and, yeah. and Rose, which which works brilliantly. Yeah. Um, and probably works better because their ages are, you know, visually they're, sure. uh, they, uh, they're, they seem more suited. Exactly. Which I think is what Eccleston had a problem with. It's like... Well, not, not in real life. <laughs> well, <laughs> Series um, three, though, it feels like, well, we've had a year and I know what this Doctor's like. Yeah. And Tennant hits the ground running. Yeah. Murray Gold, I think this is his best year. Yeah, also, fan- oh, I mean, all the strange, strange creatures. Um, series four is great as well, and there's some good stuff in series five, but I think series three is his finest work. Yeah. I mean, um, what have we got? We've what got... What duff stories are? I don't think there's any bad Smith stories. Smith and Jones is just okay. That's well, it's, fine. it's the introductory it's, story. It's fine. I like the Shakespeare Code. I mean... Well, besides the besides, JK besides, reference, besides, and you wrote it. Yeah. yeah. I think is a is a good story. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gridlock is obviously <laughs> and it's got super hands in it. <laughs> yeah, he's I didn't one of the people that in for a long time. Um, yeah, Gridlock's really good. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> comes next. I just want you to know. Experiment. I can smell something. Yeah. And it's not me. There is a w- weird smell. This is, I think it's the the smell of the people <laughs> that work in this office. It's there, not me. There is like, it does smell like garlic and Doesn't like it? kebabs yeah. or something it's weird. it's not me, it's not me. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Lazarus Experiment is the only one that I think is a bit wobbly. Oh, I like wobbly. that. I it's like good, that story. but it's the only one that's sort of like, yeah, Stephen Graham wrote that story, is yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, it's the only one that sort of feels a bit like it's, uh, oh, that's kind of, uh, Doctor Who. Okay. I, I, I think, I, I think I the rest like of the it. series is um, brilliant. Then what have we got after that? Um, we love this series so much, we can't even remember what episodes are in it. Um, 42. 42, that was really good. We loved that one. That's we great. Um, Human Nature, Family of Blood. Amazing. Fantastic. Utopia. Excellent. Um, and then the, the two part finale, besides Jesus Doctor. I mean, I think it's good, mm. generally speaking. Mm. I suppose it's only the finale. And I understand why you're not. Yeah. That massively keen on yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, it's only I, the finale that lets that series down. That I, moment. I think so. Um, but it's not enough for me to think that it isn't deserving of. I think it is a, the, com, the most consistently good series. I think mm. it probably has. It's probably more consistently good than series one. Yes. Because I think. Series yeah, series one. It it kind of goes like that. 
Yeah. But generally it's on a pretty even keel. Yeah. Whereas this is pretty good. And then it kind of, towards the end, goes like that. Yeah. And so consistently, yeah, it probably is the strongest. Yeah. Um, talking about the master, um, obviously it's the first time we had the master in Doctor Who. Mm. Comes back in End of Time, which I think, you know, we'll probably need to talk about at some point. Uh, we, we, we will. Yeah. But th the interpretation of the master in that story is quite different to this story. Yeah. And also what we get in series 10. 10. Yeah. Um, what do you think of the master retrospectively in series three? Is that maybe feeding into yeah, I mean, part I, of the reason I mean, you're I not a fan of the like finale? I still don't John Sims master in that yeah. period. That, that whole... That whole need for him to be a bit more psycho and a bit more that just that that, that just doesn't doesn't gel with me and I, and I think now it's been done so much by mm. all of the people who've played the master since that I think the master needs a rest. I don't think the master should come back for a, a long time. And I think when the master does come back, I think they need to steer as far away from that type of characterization as possible and do either do something more Delgado esque or do something completely different. Is this post? Yeah. Uh, Heath Ledger <laughs> Joker. Uh, 2006 mm, is that film? Eight. Okay. So we. Okay, interesting. I think so. Hang on, let me double check. Let's, I should let, note this as a, Yeah, as a Batman as a, as a super Batman fan. fan. I mean, the entire channel that you're watching this on, if you're watching it on YouTube, <laughs> Excuse is God. named after that particular character. Uh, what, what's it called? The Dark Knight? Yeah. Um, I've, I watched the supercut the other two, day. Of, 2008. 2008. Mm -hmm. I watched a supercut of all of Heath Ledger's scenes in that film. And I was like, my, by God, he's a good actor. Yeah. But I don't know if he's the Joker. Yeah, I, I, I have those moments as well. Mm. I, I, oh. Hi, it's a gun. I mean, he's superb, but I think, yeah, you know, that's not how I envisage that yeah. character. And when he laughs, yeah, he only does it occasionally. I yeah. mean, it's, it's not a bloody Jared Leto. Yeah. Ah, ah, <laughs> ah, but, you know, it's sort of... Oh, Jared Leto. Are you looking forward to... Oh, actually, I've never asked you what you thought of Joker. With Joaquin Phoenix. I love Joker. Yeah. I thought Joker was excellent. Besides, it's not the Joker. Besides the sort of social commentary of Yeah, like, besides that know, stuff. Yeah. You know, the, the memes. I thought it was excellent. He's not the Joker. No. By any means. But I still thought it was a good film. Are you I looking forward was, to the new one? I'm really excited for the new one. Mm. And Lady Gaga as Harley Quinn. That is fucking mad. That, that is, is a muse. That is going to be a musical. Casting, yeah. It's like, this sounds like the most batshit film ever to be made. Batshit Batman. Yeah. But he's not in it. Oh, is he not? No, no Batman in that universe. Uh, or he's only a little boy. Are they going to eventually link the um, no. Twilight dudes, Batman, into... No. I haven't seen that film. How I really want to see it. have you not seen the Batman? Yeah, but only because... For, when, you're going so, to New Zealand, what's no, no, on the no, flight? No, 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 but that's it. So when, when we were going on the flight to New Zealand last year, um, I was like, if the Batman is on this flight, I am. that is the first film I'm watching, and it yeah. wasn't. And so I watched the James Gunn Suicide Squad. Yeah. And I was film. like... John Cena is the only good thing in this movie. I love, I love, uh, what's his name? Peacemaker. Peacemaker. Have you seen the series? No, I have to watch the. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The series is amazing. It's yeah. better than the Suicide Squad. Yeah, it yeah, yeah. Is so good. The only thing I really liked about Suicide Squad at the start was like, this is fucking violent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is so violent. Yeah. Oh man, it was like um, I don't know if anybody's seen the film Elysium with Matt Damon. Uh. That rings a bell. There's a moment in it, that guy, uh, the fucking bronze guy from oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, District, District 9. 9 yeah. uh, there's a moment where his face gets blown off in that film. Right. And I think at, up until that point, because I'm not a horror person, it was yeah. the most violent thing I'd seen in the cinema. Right. And then when I saw Suicide Squad, because I, I, you know, I don't watch sort of horror movies. Yeah, yeah. That was the most sort of like, holy fuck, that's grim. <laughs> so I, you know immediately switched it off and hid under the duvet. <laughs> but um, I, I, will, I will watch, the Batman. watch the Batman. I'll get the Batman it's on the flight on the way so over. So good. Doctor oh. Who. Oh yeah, that programme. And Michael Keaton's coming back, which I mean, I yeah. have to say, this year, Michael Keaton's coming back as Batman. Yeah. X-Men is coming back mm. in the animated series. Kind of Doctor, Doctor Who's 60th anniversary. I mean, <laughs> you're that's, not that sort of over, that's sort of over there. I mean, I, we watched the trailer for The Flash and when Michael Keaton came up and they played the theme tune, I don't know what my face was like, but Annie turned around to me and she said, I have never seen such joy on your face. I know what face. your trousers were like. <laughs> 
Right, let's like, talk I want to get me a bat suit to wear. <laughs> let's talk about Doctor Who. <laughs> series four. We're on to series four. Now, people love this one. And they really love it. Mm. But... Can I, can, I, can I be a maverick here? Yeah. What I'm going to do, audio listeners, is I'm going to move series two down to C tier. And I'm going to put series four in B tier. And I'm going to look at Matthew's response and just see if you have anything to say about that. <sighs> because ju I'm just thinking about what's going to happen in the next couple of additions to this tier list. Uh, I'm just trying to... I mean, is series two that bad? Maybe it is. Well, I, it's in series four. Uh, Partners in Crime, which I don't really like that Partners much. Partners in Crime, whatever. Um, Pompeii is brilliant. Pompeii is great. Um, Planet of the Ud. Oh, I like that. Yeah, I like Planet of the Ud. Oh, yeah, I haven't good. watched it in a long time. Yeah, Maybe I nice. need to go back and look at it. The Sontaran two-parter. Uh, yeah. Um, Doctor's Daughter. Mm, no. <laughs> no. Not very good. No. Um, Midnight. But the, the, there's obviously another story before there's that, but I can't remember what it is. <laughs> Turn left and somewhere left. in between there as well. Oh no, that comes after that comes midnight. after midnight, and which apparently the... is excellent. So, okay, I'll yeah, take no, your word mid for I it. I think midnight's pretty no, good. No, no, midnight's oh, amazing. Yeah, uh, turn, turn left. left. Okay. Oh, I can't remember. And then the finale, I'm not, I'm not massive like, on. I think yeah. it's it's not as great as people make out. I don't what's think the so What's the Christmas special that year? Is it was there a Christmas special that year? Uh, Next Doctor. That that's not great. And then, of course, you've got Planet of the Dead, which I cannot remember. Yeah, all. okay, so this also includes the specials. Yeah, yeah so, Planet so Planet of the, of the Dead, Dead. And then... Waters uh, of Mars, which is obviously brilliant. amazing. And then The End of Time. Which is pretty good, but apart from the last ten minutes of... Do you know what? I, 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 will, I, will, I will elevate this. I'll put it back up to A, and I'm going to put Series but 2 in B. That's what I was kind of thinking. Yeah? Is that fair? Yeah, I, 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 was, I was kind of thinking that myself. Yeah, we have got still Series 6 and Series 9 to go. Yeah. So I'm just trying to think ahead of you yeah, know, what's yeah, yeah. going in D tier. Yeah. Okay, uh, so at the moment we've got series one and three in S, four in A, and B in series two. Series so. five. Yeah. I'm going to immediately, I'm going to put it in A, and I'm going to also put it ahead, if I can, of series four. I, I, I agree, I think. Yeah. Because series five felt like a real shot in the arm. I think I was feeling a bit fatigued by the... And obviously, the, you got, the thing is, like, if you're 10 years old and you're watching series four, like, if you're 10 years old and you started watching from series one, you're going to be loving it, you know? But if you're my age and you're, like, 15 mm. or 14 watching series four and you're a teenager and you're an absolute prick, <laughs> <laughs> like I was, then you are going to be, like... Ooh. Yeah. Um, you know, and, like, and so series five for you was like a yeah. Oh, it's, you yeah, know, yeah. Okay. I remember being very excited and like the whole, the whole you know rebrand and everything mm. was so exciting at the time. I um I remember. So this is going back quite a way. I mean, yeah, two thousand and ten. I remember going to see the Tim Burton Alice in Wonderland yeah. in 3D just so I could see the series five trailer right. because they put it ahead of that movie. Yeah, and you could watch it in 3D. Yeah. And I remember it starting, and I just remember thinking, yeah, this is a whole new Doctor Who. And it yeah. felt new, yeah. and, and it felt like, although Series 4, I'm sure, was the most amount of money the series had ever had put into it, yeah. Series 5 felt like another level yeah. in the promotion of it. Yeah. Uh, in terms of what happened sort of episode to episode, it kind of felt the same, yeah. really. Um, obviously, there was a change of head writer, a change of cast... But the production team seemed as solid as it was yeah. for the previous four seasons of the programme. Yeah. Um, Karen Gillan is gorgeous. <laughs> Matt Smith is brilliant. Yeah, he's very good. I think it's probably his best series. I would completely agree. Uh, he does great performances through his run. Yeah. But I think this is this is the most... This is the 11th Doctor I think of. Yes, and it's the strongest run of stories for any of his series. Uh, it felt like that the people who were still custodians of Russell's Who mm -hmm. were still there looking after the brand. Yeah. So when you had the action figures come out, yeah. that felt like yeah. everything was still really rock solid and secure. Yeah, I mean, like the Sonic Screwdriver and the Time... Not Time Crash set, the 11th Hour set. Yeah. The, the two Matt Smiths. You know, yeah. That came out the day the, the episode came out, you know. And there were variants of that costume. There was yeah, the red one the, and the blue, the blue one. one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the Sonic came out. It just felt like... 
it was still on this upswing of momentum. Yeah. And while the wallpaper had changed, fundamentally the show still yeah, felt the same you know, in, inside. Because, I mean, you've got to think, this was at a period where the BBC even thought to themselves, well, there's no future in Doctor Who after David Tennant leaves. You know, it's only Russell saying, don't be mad. You know, mm. Mm. David Tennant is not the show. Um, and how right he was. Um, but... Yeah, I mean, Series 5 has got some got some really good stuff in it. It does. Um, I can't think of any standout honkers. I mean, like, Beast Below Beast isn't Below, brilliant, but, no. it, it, but it is also like, well, it's Amy's first journey into the, in the TARDIS, and you can kind of forgive it for being a bit fluffy. Yeah, I mean, that and the Lodger... I mean, I'm not particularly enamoured with the Silurian two-parter. Mm, okay. I mean, it's fine, mm. um, but obviously I take umbrage with the fact that the Silurians don't look like Silurians. But that's it, but if you hadn't seen what Neil Gordon was, yeah, going to do, I'd still be if, I'd still be pissed off because they still don't look like. Mm. But I guess the trouble is, you've got jobbing actors who really want to get their face out there, yeah, and they're in Doctor Who, yeah. And would you take that job as a good actor? if your face was so covered by prosthetics that you couldn't see your, like, eyes I mean, behind it, you know? I would, because it's Doctor Who, and I'd love to be able to say I played a Doctor Who monster. But if you weren't a sad git. If I, <laughs> <laughs> if I wasn't a sad git, Do you know what I mean? Not. Yeah. It, it feels like you need, you know, there's probably something in equity, yeah. unless you're Craig Ells yeah. in, you know, Flux, that says we have to be able to see enough of your face. Yeah. It feel you know, I, so, so it's an evolution of the Silurians. Yeah. And they were another, like, cast of the Silurians. So yeah. kind of, you know. Um, yeah. But it, but even, like, looking at the graphic, for, for audio listeners, we're looking at the swirly Time Vortex promo with Amy Pond and the Doctor mm. falling into the watery vortex. <sighs> looking at that, I just think, man, like, the, the promise that there is. Yeah. And it holds up. And the 11th hour, I think, is... One of the best regeneration stories ever. I agree. And, uh, the, and the finale's great. And the finale's excellent. You know, God, that cliffhanger to Pandorica Opens is so good. I mean, occasionally I do go back and just rewatch yeah. that bit. Because yeah. the score is amazing. Murray's really going... I mean, unfortunately, the 11th Doctor's theme, which is fantastic, is just so overused in the following series that it, it's, a sh it's a shame because I remember when it first played, I was like, wow, this is an another banger. I remember going onto YouTube probably immediately after that episode went out and people trying to do the thing where they, oh, they mask the, the yeah. audio out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because people still do it now with like wrestling themes. When yeah. a wrestler comes out, you think, that's a great tune. And they try and tune out the commentator's thing yeah. over the top of it. It's the same sort of thing. And you're just like, I just want to hear that that melody and that yeah. bombasticness. But I still think that it gives you the same endorphin rush listening to the I Am The Doctor yeah. in the 11th hour. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it, it, it wavers watching that episode again. No. Um, I, I'm really looking forward to us going back and doing more Series 5. Yeah, me too. Because I've still got so many good memories yeah, yeah, yeah. of and, it going out. And, and the series, a rebrand of the series has never, has not, felt as good no as that no. did like the capaldi stuff it kept the logo and made it a bit skinnier yeah you know nothing really felt like big and impactful like that did mm. likewise probably the jodie whittaker stuff is the only thing that felt as different but like you said it didn't really deliver it, not, it, not on the promise that i think people generated for yeah, it. yeah you know it felt like to me, the Jodie Whittaker era's marketing, particularly for that first series, didn't really didn't really match what the <clears> show <throat> was doing. But it didn't. But uh, so I think what we're probably saying is it didn't hit the public consciousness, maybe it's, in the well, same yeah. way Series Five did. Yeah. But that isn't necessarily the fault of Series Eleven. No. It's more. Maybe a comment on the place the series was in by the time we got yeah, to Jodie I mean, Whittaker as think, the Doctor. How because many they years tried. Is that? Yeah. You know, like going into the centre of Bristol, besides seeing adverts for the Doctor Who experience, which you would expect to see in Bristol because it was in Cardiff. Yeah. And it's only it's a, door, a skip over the, the um, bridge. Um, there was no promotion for Doctor Who, visible promotion. Yeah. 
after series five. Yeah. Apart from, okay, going down Union Street and seeing that they're screening the 50th anniversary at the Odeon. Right. There. When Jodie Whittaker becomes the Doctor, you start seeing her... Uh, yeah, that is true. ...on the side of, you the know, phone boxes and buses yeah. and all that. Um, so I wonder if that's more a symptom of where the show was by the time she it's became just, the Doctor. It's just fatigue, isn't it? You've got to think how old the programme is by that point. Mm. And that's the thing. So when I was doing all these graphics, I was thinking, you realise this is an ongoing series. Yeah. When you look at all the... Because for audio listeners, the way we've done the tier list is that it's sort of like the hero shot of the series is, yeah. for, is for each thing. And when you look at it, you go, okay, so the production team has changed between each one mm, because yeah. either the graphics become a bit better or yeah. the, the promotion of the series becomes a bit stronger. Yeah. They've definitely put some more money into this or whatever. And you realise it is an ongoing series. And so when you get to the one we're going to get to now, Series 6. Yeah. I think this is where a production team hasn't maybe stagnated. Yeah. But maybe it's not pushing the boat out no. as much as it could. I mean, I was just looking at that thinking, look at how exciting Series 5 looks and Series 6 is yeah. just like... Like a band poster, isn't and, it? And I was, I was looking for more images of what's of, of series six. And there's and not really anything. The, is there? the only other promo kind of hero shot I could find because the Black Archive is responsible for all of these great shots. So go and follow the Black Archive on Twitter and, and, and go and look at their stuff on their website. But the only other image I could find was them looking in the reflection of the astronaut's helmet. Oh yeah. That was the kind of general yeah. image for the series. Series six, Matt. Where does it go? D. I think it goes D. Yeah. Uh, now, do we think that's because at this point we now start to become embittered teenagers and we don't like it? Or I do mean, we think it's the quality of the series itself? I don't think that helps. I don't think that helps. But when I rewatched series six, I really, you know, I was quite when, excited. When was this? So that was when I did my oh. big marathon. So 2014, 15. You know, I was quite excited to get to these stories in a way because I was like, oh, I'm, I'm really open to re-evaluating these stories. But then when I came to re-evaluate these stories, I realised that there wasn't much to re-evaluate because half the time they were just crap. Um, I love the opening story, the two-parter. Yeah. And I love the silence. I think the silence are a fantastic monster. Mm. Uh, and I think the whole shtick is cool. Visually. Um, visually. Um, the whole backstory, that whole Church of the Silence, I think that could have been quite clever. Unfortunately, it just gets bogged down with wank. And the less said about Madame Fuckface, what's her name? Madame, uh, Madame Turf. <laughs> Madame Turf, well done. Um, uh, um, that silly old cow. The, 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 I mean, she is the such a shit villain. I actually can't remember her name. I know, this is it. She's got an eye patch. Yeah. Lady Eye Patch Turf Face. <laughs> Lady Eye Patch Turf Face. I mean, ugh, she has no, there's no story to her. She's just there. She's just the moustache twirling villain mm. because they needed a villain, I mm. guess. Mm. I mean, who knows? Who knows what Stephen Moffat had planned in his head for any of this stuff? I mean, I think we're pretty, I, I think we, we all sort of really know that Ideally, Matt Smith would have stayed on for another year, so his whole arc could have been properly fleshed out. So, so he stays on until Series 8? Yeah. yeah, so he would have had an extra year. I think that was what Moffat was banking on. And so Does everything it, ends very quickly. You're, 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 if you're a Patreon subscriber, you would have already seen our commentary of uh, the after party. But isn't there a thing where he... I'm sure there's a moment where he turns to Stephen and says, I'll do another year. Is that what he said? I think there's something that happens in oh, that really? with, I'll do another that. year. Which suggests to me that, yeah, that was maybe what they were expecting, was they were going to get... Yeah, I think that was the plan. ...another season out of Matt. And I think the reason why that happened is because, obviously, Series 6 gets split, but then Series 7 gets split across two years, mm. which is obviously a massive balls up. Mm. And, I mean, I remember thinking at the time, things are not going well behind the scenes because why why would you do that um and i think that's why matt goes because he's like well i've shot i've mm. what i was contractually obligated to do you know it's not my fault that it's gone a bit cockeyed um i don't know 
No, I no, I, I think. I mean, we haven't really talked about the episodes themselves. But no, I mean, I mean we, we haven't gotten I, to I, that I, yet. I think that the spectre of what hangs over that series, in terms of what comes next, yeah, the fact that it's split into two, yeah, doesn't help. No, uh, I think that the ganger storyline, considering that a good man goes to war, is the finale of the first yeah. half of that series, isn't great. And then when you get to the finale, we're we're on to um, what's the what's the finale of that series? The wedding of River. The Song. wedding of River Song. Yeah, which I always forget what it's about. Uh, and it is really just time's gone a bit wanky. Let's get on a train. Yeah. There's some silence. We'll get married at a pyramid. Don't worry. You know that whole thing about the Doctor being dead, where Stephen Moffat promised everyone it's nothing like a robot or anything like that. It's a fucking robot. It's just shit. I remember that first promo at the end of. Um, Christmas Carol, when you see the skeletal hand of the 11th Doctor clutching the sonic screwdriver, mm. I'm thinking, holy shit, what's this all about? And the What did that turn out to be in the actual series? Well, it's just that he dies in the lake, doesn't he? Or at the lake. I think that was all it was meant to be. It was just some sort of, just trying to be a bit artsy-fartsy with it all. But it, it, it didn't, <clears> deli- <throat> that was a promise that was not really delivered on. That whole thing, the whole Lake Silencio thing, ugh. Uh, yeah, I think this holds a certain weight for a lot of Doctor Who fans of a certain age. Yeah. Uh, and that's cool in the same way that Series 1 holds a lot of weight for us. Of course, yeah. Um, because it was the first series back. And yeah. the classic series has a lot of resonance with us as well because it's what we grew up on before the show came back. Yeah. But I just think that <sighs> there's a lot of waffle that just doesn't get fully, as you say, fully delivered yeah. on. Yeah. And You know, River Song takes a lot of the focus and that gets on my nerves. Yeah. And then the, the whole revelation that she's Amy Pond's daughter is like, well, we sort of all worked that out. That was like what everyone was sort of thinking. Mm. And it was like, fine. Mm. Who gives a shit? Melody Pond, River, River. Song. Yeah, yeah, it's like... All right, Stephen, we, we see what you're trying yeah, to do here. You know, yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. It's, yeah. Uh, let's let's uh, chuff on because we've you know I'm sure we've got a lot more to say yeah. about seasons that are coming up. Uh, series seven, instinctively, where we, <sighs> in, so just a recap, a recap for people who yeah. are listening. S tier series one, series three, A tier series five, series four, B tier series two, C tier currently empty, and D tier series six. <sighs> and we're on to series seven now. So seven is the split one. So this is a weird one, isn't it? So you start off with... Asylum of the Daleks. Oh. So that is where we get the uh, Windows Movie Maker colour changing title sequence. God almighty. Fucking hell, are you gonna drink that Thatcher's? No, do you want it? If, if we're gonna talk about that yeah. series seven. Go on, pour a little series bit. Series seven pour, I've got a bit of headache, but pour, <laughs> pour, pour a bit in my glass. Right, um, so, um, and then we've got Dinosaurs on a Spaceship, Power of Three. I mean, um, I think Power of Three is a Power of Poo, but... Yeah. Uh, I don't mind that so much. Really? Not really. Oh, God, I... uh, and then we've got... Thanks, mate. Um, uh, the Angels Take Manhattan and uh, A Town Called Mercy, which all to me seem like series six stories, really. Yeah, I mean, Town Called Mercy, I remember on broadcast, I quite enjoyed yeah, it. I think yeah, it, I think it's a fine story. What was the one before it? Um, Dinosaurs on a Spaceship. That is, again, it's very vanilla. Mm. You know, I, 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 it, it, it's fine. Um, I think that Series 7, on the strength of Series 7B, yeah. and Jenna Coleman goes in S. No, uh, <laughs> I think it goes... I would put it B. B. Yeah. Do you think it's better than Series 2? I think maybe the first half probably weights it worse than Series 2. Yeah. But if the second half was a full 13 yeah. series run, I think it would be above Series 2. Uh, yeah, I mean, the Snowmen... Eh. The Bells of St. John is okay. Uh, Rings I quite, of Al- like, I quite like Bells of St. John. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a harmless, g- nice introductory story for a it's, it's on the same level as like a, a Smith & Jones. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Rings of Akaten, well, we've reviewed that, so yeah, everyone knows what we think about rubbish. Um, I can't remember what else comes out. Hyde is uh, in there. That's The Monsters Are In Love. That's great until The Monsters Are In Love, yeah. where immediately I just go, ah. Oh. <laughs> Because it's um, so good up to that point. It, it really like, is. A lot it's of atmosphere great. and stuff, and you're just like, why? Um, why can't monsters be monsters? What else is in that? 
Um, so what's the finale for that series? Oh, uh, the, the name whisper, of the Doctor. The name of the doctor which was really exciting because you see all the old Doctors except for Paul McGann. The Whispermen the whisper are a men. slightly louder version of the silence. <laughs> yeah, I think you made this gag earlier Bons! in the year. I <laughs> think you did, and I, and I praised you for Thank it. Thank you. Um, so, well done. Um, they're cool. Uh, Richard E. Grant is wasted. great, but, but wasted. Um, Ian McKellen is wasted in The Snowmen. Fucking hell, Ian McKellen's <laughs> yeah. in The Snowmen. Yeah. Is he? Yeah. Is he the great intelligence? He's the voice of the great intelligence. Fuck yeah. me. Uh, why couldn't The Snowmen just have been Yetis? I kind of get that you want to do something different, and they're sort of in the same ballpark. Snow. <laughs> Snow, yeah. But, and, and, and I have to, I, I would have, I, I like the idea of sentient, sentient snowmen rather than Yetis rampaging around Victorian London. Yeah. Because uh, the, the, the visual's a bit better. But they were pants, those snowmen. But if you had snowmen that were like the snowman, the, the yeah, animation, yeah. and they had legs, <laughs> yeah. rather than just sort of bobbling up and down on this sort of like globular bottom, I think that's <laughs> probably better. Um, and they were more like, like Yeti-ish. A, yeah. You know, that would be better. They just weren't... I don't know. Um, I guess the trouble is, it's Christmas, so... Oh, Cold War. That's great. That's I pretty like good. Cold War. Uh, that's really good. Uh, I think it's all right where it is. Yeah, I mean... So it's, it's, it's B tier below series two. The trouble is, see, I remember new series Doctor Who stories by remembering what toys I have on my shelf, but this is the period where no toys were being made, so... Uh, apart from the, the, the 3.75 inch, oh, yeah, and then made. they had the sets as well. Yeah. Now, if you go into the film and TV store... Oh, they still do them, don't they? ...in the galleries in Bristol, yeah. you will find a... Um, there's an Ice Warriors one, isn't there? A Cold War one. There's a Cold War one, there's a Dalek Invasion one, and there is also, from Series 6, the Blue Peter TARDIS console. Yeah, they have got that. Freely available for you to buy. There's a lot of tat in there, so, you know, you're, you're, <laughs> wel you're welcome to it. Um, so, yeah, I think Series 7 is fine where it is. Uh, that includes the 50th anniversary. Oh, yeah, that's in there, isn't it? And, of course, the Time of the Doctor, which is not good. I think it's fine where it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so we've come to the end of the Matt Smith era, so a recap for listeners. It, it gets into B just on the basis of Matt Smith's new costume. Oh, yeah. New TARDIS as well. And Jenna Coleman. And Jenna Coleman. S tier, Series 1, Series 3, A tier, Series 5, Series 4, B tier, Series 2, Series 7, C tier is yet unfilled, and D tier... Series six. I have a feeling that C tier is about to get. <laughs> There's all, it's gonna yeah fill it up. Do you reckon series eight goes in C tier? Yes. So much promise. I mean, um, with with, but with with yeah. you know Doctor Who Live, the next Doctor. Yeah. There was a lot of promise behind it. Uh, and he didn't hold his the pearls once. <laughs> no, no, not once did he hold his the pearls. Uh, but. He was the actor that people who are kind of classic series-esque Doctor Who fans yeah. would have wanted. Yeah. The way he dressed, bang on. Mm. Everything in the lead up to it, besides... Um, the promotion was great. All that oh, stuff in the TARDIS. Yeah, okay, fine. Because yeah. you thought, oh, Doctor Who's got a bit of an edge to it. With the uh, him picking up the phone and getting electrocuted in the TARDIS. <laughs> oh, that always happens to me. Uh, yeah, I always get shot. That's why from. I don't use landlines anymore. <laughs> um, but, you know... Um, <laughs> it's so weird. What is that all about? I don't know. Actually, now that I've now you, now come to think of it, that was some weird promotion. I'm about to chuck another one out there as well. Right. 100% Rebel Time Lord. Uh. Get to fuck your fucking bam, y'all, by the way. Um, <laughs> well, I, I'm talking Scottish. Only Peter Capaldi would understand what you said He there. would, yeah. And Rapsi Nesbitt. And Rapsi Nesbitt and Lenny. That yeah. is um, a, a series that I remember watching Deep Breath go out. And I was around my friend's house, and and they had, they hadn't watched Doctor Who for years, right? But they were a big fan of Capaldi through um, the thick, thick of, it. of it, and they thought, "Wow, Peter Capaldi is Doctor Who. Okay, here's an actor with a bit of weight. Yeah, interested to see what he does with the character." And then, big sexy lady at yeah. the dinosaur, you know, everything up until that point, grand. Mm. Ben Wheatley is a director for two of the stories. Yeah. Fuck, you've got a really weighty British actor. I'm not director. director. Yeah. Not sure what he's done since, but that was big. Yeah. For the time. And it all leaked. Yeah, the first episode. I remember you showing me the black and white. Mm. Uh, yeah. Did you also show me Jodie's Jodie crashing through the top of the train? Yeah, that leaked, didn't I it? I think you yeah. might, might show me that as well. Yeah. But I definitely remember. Yeah, I remember seeing a bit of Series Eight. I think it was the scene when they're. Towards the end of the episode, when they're 
I don't know what the what's deep breath about. It's what? a lot of bollocks yeah. before, it gets, <laughs> before it gets to the plot, basically. Uh, uh, did he jump or was he pushed? He pushed him out the window. Of course he did. Yeah. Peter fucking Capaldi. Yeah. Of course he pushed him out. Um, uh, Into the Dalek. Uh, pretty good. Yeah, I like that story. What's the third episode in that series? Robin Hood. Uh, I like the bit where he flicks the bird at Robin Hood that's pretty good <laughs> I like that story it's fun do you remember when they cut the bit out because of the yeah was it an ISIS beheading that it was happens? the ISIS beheading and the story works so much better for it yeah. because yeah in the in the episode uh, the sheriff of Nottingham is a human being that falls into a vat of gold and dies yeah like a, like a Bond villain yeah um, can you tell Mark Gatiss wrote that story yeah but obviously in the original you know the the one that mm. was supposed to be televised. He was going to be revealed to be a robot. Yeah. And suddenly the weight of his death is like, oh, well, he's just a robot. So I'm so glad that yeah it ended up having to go out the way that it did because I see yeah. You know. Um. Because that again that made it feel like oh you know this feels like you've had the the robot at the the robot guy in the first episode gets impaled on a thing. You know everyone's dying left right and centre mm. and into the Dalek. And now Sheriff of Nottingham is just boiled alive in molten gold. Which, um, I mean, and, and yeah, I mean, interesting to think, because obviously Missy is the thread for that series. Yeah. Um, and obviously she would have popped up with the Sheriff of Nottingham had yeah. they been human. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it's an interesting thing to have the am I a good man thing play yeah. out through the series. But... I mean, Matt doesn't really... No, and, and I, I was gonna I was gonna mention this because I, I, when I, when I was watching the uh, original review of death overrated episodes video, uh, there's a poster in your room of Peter Capaldi, mm. and it has something like I've lived for two thousand years yeah. and I've done a lot of bad things. It's about yeah. time I made up for that. Yeah. Does he ever? No. 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 That whole thing, am I a good man? Never really gets resolved. I've done a lot of bad things. Dimensions in time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Series six. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Doctor Who Live, the after party. <laughs> um, yeah. So it, it never really gets resolved. Um, time heist, I kind of remember not hating because I thought the teller was a really cool monster. The, the teller's great, but the story itself is a bit... Uh, yeah. Keely Hawes, wasted. She is wasted. Yeah. And that was at the time when I had the hots for Keely Hawes. Has she just come out of Ashes to Ashes? She just come out of Ashes to Ashes. That, I remember watching... I was so excited. I was like, phew. I remember watching that final episode of Ashes to Ashes. It was even on like BBC Breakfast that yeah. morning. And they were like, we're going to find out what the whole Life on Mars thing was all about as well. Yeah. And it was kind of basically what everybody anticipated yeah. it was. But um, I did a whole though. rewatch of Life on Mars about you... a year and a half ago. Yeah, Life on Mars is so good. And it's so exceptionally good. good. Yeah. And I was, I was speaking to Stan about it. I said, we could do Ashes to Ashes. Yeah. But it's not as good. It's, I loved it, but it's, it's not as good, but I, I still think it's really good. I just remember the bit where he jumps into the Blue Peter Garden. Oh, yeah. And fucks it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. they play the thing of the... Yeah, that's, so, so, that's good. so good. And of course, there's a new series in the works. Lazarus. I don't know if that's ever going to happen. Is it? Is it even... I think so. Is it? Philip Glenister and John Sim have met up to discuss it with yeah, Matthew but Graham and stuff. That's and it's, like I think saying, they've talked to people... That's like saying, oh, it'd be so good. Adrian Rigglesford saying, I've written a Doctor Who script and all the Doctors are going to do it. It doesn't mean it's going to happen. Oh, I hope it does. I hope it'd be it does. so good. Especially to see John Sim, to see his character and Keely Hawes' character interact. Oh, that's what is, is Keely Hawes I think the idea it? is that all oh the. God. It's set in the 90s. Is it? Yeah, I think. Oh, okay, I'm on board. I think, I'm I fully think, on board. I think, with this. you know, they've all aged okay. appropriately. Yeah. Or. So I don't know, but yeah. holy shit, wouldn't it be good because to see them all isn't together? Sam Tyler's thing that he disappeared and they found a burnt out car? Yeah, and all, that. all that stuff. Fuck. Yeah, okay, I'm on board. Yeah, I'm interested again. I have to watch Ashes to Ashes before that comes yeah, out. Yeah, I, I, yeah, because Ashes to Ashes really gets more into the nitty gritty of like what the what that whole weird thing is all about. It's purgatory. I, yeah, Just I want so to try know. and watch it with with Annie, but yeah. I don't know if it's I don't know if it'll be up the street, but. Yeah, no, I think I think you should be yeah. into it. I mean, it's got a, the, the best soundtrack of any TV series So ever. fucking good. Oh, and that so theme good. tune's great. The guy who did the theme tune, or who did the uh, soundtrack, is uh, the guy who did the music for Adventure in Space and Time. Is it? Yeah, I forget And that name. is a brilliant soundtrack. Yeah. 
Um, uh, anyway. Uh, we're, I think, are we distracting ourselves from talking about Series 9? Yes. Series 9 goes into D. Get that right in the bin. <laughs> uh, is that below Series 6 or above it? I think it's got to be below for me. Uh, yeah, I think it probably does. So, I mean, they're on a par of poo. <laughs> <laughs> a, a poo par. Um, I think this was probably where I was sort of falling out of love. Oh, I mean, and this, this is where I fell out of love with Doctor Who. I mean, I fell out of love with Doctor Who Series 6. Peter Capaldi comes in and I'm like, oh, yeah. you, can, you can take me back. Yeah. And I'm like, I really want to love you, Peter Capaldi, but your stories aren't landing for me and I can't really get a grasp of who you are as the Doctor. Mm. Um, this is then, sounding all too real. And then this happens. And then it's just like, ah, oh, no, you didn't even try. And, and I, th I think there's one person to blame in this. As gorgeous as she is. Jenna Coleman. Yeah. Because I think what happens is she throws all of series nine into a bit of a fucking tizzy. Yeah. Because she's supposed to leave at the end of series eight and then says, all right, I'll do another year. Yeah. And I think that buggers up quite a few of the scripts for that year. It balls it all up because last Christmas, which yeah. I love, I think is a, Stephen Moffat's best Christmas special. I, I agree. Argue. Um, I think the, a lot of people would probably say Christmas Carol. Ugh. It's fine. It's fine. But this is love. It's good because it's got a good, good premise. It's cool good baddie. Monster, good monster yeah. in it. You know, it's great. Um, what's, I mean, Christmas Carol. What's that got? Fucking floating fish. What do you shit? Well, but uh, <laughs> Michael the, Gambon. The return of uh, Doctor Mysterio. <laughs> is it um, a better or worse than the Husbands of River Song, which is our Christmas uh, special no. this year? No. Oh my God, we're not watching that this year. That's our Christmas special. I this will year. fly to New Zealand to kick you in the bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least I'll be able to see you. Yeah. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> Bang, and then straight on a flight back. Yeah. <laughs> like something out of bottom. Uh, um, but that ending would have been beautiful with her as an old lady. Yeah. You know, oh. on her deathbed with Peter Capaldi. And that whole thing with Peter Capaldi, like, you know, you're still, you still look young to me. It's so beautiful, mm. you know, and I'm not really a sort of a sentimental, smolchy person, but that does tug at yeah, my heart. Yeah, you are. Am I? Um, but that does tug at my heart string, uh, strings, uh, strings. Uh, but yeah, then then she comes back and it's like, oh, don't worry, it was another dream within a dream. Good luck, everyone, because we're about to go into a fucking nightmare, which is series nine. Because um, we no have... one's watching Doctor Who anymore. Quick, get someone from Game of Thrones in. People will watch it. Oh, no, they shit, won't. yeah. Because they really pushed that on the on the they social did. media. Yeah. And I, I remember, I remember. Yeah, they were doing Maisie Cam. Yeah. Do you remember that? And that was that was when you sort of started to feel like. I don't think I don't think it. anyone is taking care of the of the brand of Doctor Who as a, as a full entity. Yeah. Um, they're mainly concerned with what people are saying on the internet. Yeah. That was, that was when it sort of started to lean into that. Yeah. Which is also symptomatic of Sherlock. Yeah. And I think Stephen Moffat, you know, spinning all these plates at the yeah. same time. And it affects both programs yeah. because Sherlock starts out as a brilliant, the first series of Sherlock is great. Yeah. Series two of Sherlock is also really, really good. Yeah. And then, I'm assuming this sort of, yeah. you know, tallies up in terms of the timelines. Yeah. Series nine slash eight of Doctor Who falls off a cliff. Sherlock does the same thing. Yeah. And off the Riken back. Off the off the Riken Riken shite. Sh shite 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 wank. Yeah. And 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 again, yeah. I just think series nine that opening two parter on Scaro is an affront to the Daleks, almost. Almost in the same way that Asylum of the Daleks is. Yeah, I mean, the second half is, for me, better. Mm. And the scenes that sort of save it, really, are the scenes with the Doctor and Davros. Uh, th Unfortunately, until Davros opens his eyes. Um, uh, <clears throat> and, and when the Doctor dumps a, uh, a disabled man out of his wheelchair and puts I him mean, on the floor. Yeah, right, I okay, so he's a Nazi, so it's fine. But then you get the... Uh, oh, don't, don't how, remind how, me of that. How fucking... do I get a cup of tea on? Uh, don't, don't ask me. I'm just the doctor. Deal with it. In the moment, I'm just like, I'm Why? so not on board with whatever you're trying to do with this TV series. Yeah. But more than that, whatever you're trying to say to the people watching it. Yeah. We, like, you and I are now having a conversation. Yeah. You have reached out to me and said, stop thinking about what you're watching. 
And just go with it. And go with it. And, and the, I'm saying, absolutely not. And, and, and so as much as you've and, had a conversation with me, I'm saying to you, no way. And, and the same thing happens in Sherlock with yeah. series three when you've got the fans that are yeah. coming up with theories of like, how did Sherlock And he's them? ridiculing them. Yeah. And he he's ridiculing people shipping them yeah. as a couple. And it's like, well, they're your fan base that, you know, are really into it. Don't, you know, don't make them a gag and take the piss out of them. Like Russell was at least a little bit covert with it when he did Love, Love and Monsters. Monsters. Yeah. But this is just shut up and watch my TV series. You, you're not as clever as I am. Yeah. And it's like, uh, you know, Doctor Who fans have a lot of goodwill. Uh, at least do that in a good episode. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor Who fans... Do that in Blink, not in this shit. Doctor Who fans have a lot of goodwill because, you know, as we said earlier, we are essentially watching a children's TV series that yeah. adults adore. Yeah. And so when you start talking to the adults, when you start talking down to the adults... Yeah. It's, a, it's like, it's, it's offensive, you know? Yeah. It's, you know... Maybe we're being too hyperbolic about this. I don't know, but series nine was was a sort of it was a point I hit where I thought I, uh, you know, you and I are not meeting on the same level. Yeah, here. it was really the sort of period where you thought like if I missed an episode. Yeah, I did. You know, I wouldn't necessarily. You know, I won't go out of my way to yeah. make sure I'm home to watch it. I'll catch it on iPlayer. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, and I think the promotion reflects the series because the promotion is like, oh, just the Doctor and Clara going around, doing our thing or whatever the line is. And that is what these stories really feel like. Yeah. Because it just sort of feels like, oh, we are doing the same old, same old over and over again. Um, I'm, I'm just finding a quote from somebody who was responsible for producing this series. Just so you can see who said it. Right, okay. Uh, Nikki Wilson used to sit in script meetings going, why don't they just go back to the start and stop this happening? That's the, that's the kind of producer you've got working on the show yeah. at this point. And you just go like, fundamentally this show is not working. Yeah. And which is why, when we come to series 10, Yeah. do we... Where do we... Where, I, I'm going to try and put this in B tier, I think. Do you reckon? <sighs> or do you reckon it needs to go in C? Above, above Series 8 or... Oh, definitely above Series 8. So, so are we saying C tier or... I would, I would I put it argue... Above, uh, but better than Series 7. Okay. Yeah. So, for, so as a recap for people listening, C tier, Series 1, Series 3... S tier, eight, Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> S tier, Series 1, Series 3. A tier, Series 5, Series 4... B tier, series two, series 10, new edition, series seven, C tier, series eight, D tier, series six, series nine. Um, I ju just going back to what you said about the scripts and, you know, this, this sort of thing. If I was a script editor <laughs> looking at scripts or, you know, on the production or in charge, my, I would think, right, what would Tom Baker say <laughs> to this? Mm. You know? Whip it shit. Yeah. On a scale of whippet shit, how whippet shit is this story? Uh, now, uh, series nine has Heaven Sent. Yep. That's about it. That's about the only really strong story. I mean, people obviously like Hellbent. You've got I, the I, I shield, get... a shield, a two-parter in the middle. Which Anyone who likes Hellbent, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't mind it, but you can kick me in the bollocks for the return. I'll come back. <laughs> you can come back and kick me in the bollocks. Um... <laughs> Or we just have a mutual bollock kicking. Um, <laughs> this is an episode of bottom. <laughs> um, the Ashilda stuff is just uh, just bad. Yeah. Those two episodes are... The Viking one is pretty awful. The one that follows... Uh, I mean... Is the, Cy is the Zygon two-parter in oh, this series? Oh, don't get me started on that Zygon story. Yeah. And the people who like it, my God, what are you on? And what else is in that series? Um, Kaka. That crappy Dalek one. Oh, under the flood. No, under the lake. Under the lake before, before the flood. That's which is fine. Pretty good. Um, it's about it, really, isn't it? It really is about it. And so face the raven. Uh, yeah, yeah, but it's totally That's, undermined by heaven, yeah, by hell but, Yeah, I mean, I don't really think much of face of the raven either. No. Um, I think it would probably be thought better of. 
Oh no, I hated that bit where they, like the Cyberman is like in love or something with a woman. Oh, fuck. And it's just like, what are you doing? Why? So, Series 10. Series 10. Feels like another, right, let's, let's go out on a bang. Yeah. And the pilot is pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, smile is fine. Yeah. Oxygen, I think, is brilliant. I need to rewatch it, but I remember thinking it was good. I, I, I love that story. What was the... So we, the two-parter for that was the... Oh, no, it was a three-parter for the monks. Yeah, so, I mean, the so series 10 starts off good. You get that lag, really, yeah. that three-parter. Extremis, the pyramid at the end of the world, and I forget the other one. I can't remember the other one. Yeah. Because, um, I mean... The Lie like, of the Land. Lie of the Land. Um, yeah, I mean, the whole thing... I mean, I like extremists. I know you're not you're not keen mm. on it. I liked it, and then after that, it all sort of goes to crap. You've got the fake uh, regeneration, which is just pointless. It serves no real thing in the plot other it's, than to be Taylor Bait. Taylor Bait. Taylor, Taylor Bait. Bait. It's not the same as like series four because that is like the yeah. end of that series. Yes. And you think, okay, maybe this is a. Nat- I don't know if we knew about the specials at that point, so this is maybe a natural remember, yeah. end tenant or whatever. Yeah. But this is like. Well, it's the middle of the series. Like, obviously, it's not going to happen. Yeah, and at least in series four, that has further repercussions with mm. creating the Metacrisis Doctor. You know, it all leads somewhere. This is just, oh, I, I can do it because why mm. not? Um, and Bill doesn't even know what regeneration is. No. So what's the point? It's weird. Yeah, true, um, true. It makes no sense. Unless there's a scene that we've never seen where he's like, oh, by the way, uh, yeah. I can change my face. I used to be younger. Yeah. Um, didn't we all? Um, <laughs> so, yeah, that that sags the series down. Because I think up until that, Knock Knock's good as well. Knock Knock's fine. I don't fine. really like Smile. Smile's a bit poo. No. Knock Knock I like. But then we have, I think probably, except for the series five finale, probably the best finale outside of Russell's Who. Yeah. Which is the series 10 one. Yeah. Um, and a really good Ice Warrior story. And a really uh, I love Empress, Empress, of Empress of Mars. Great. Shot around the corner yeah. at Redcliffe Caves. Yeah. Where they shot the trailer for season nine box set. Absolutely. Oh yeah, fuck. Yeah. I was I was literally around the corner. I live around the corner. Why wasn't I asked to do it? Yeah. I can only wonder why. Series ten. Didn't have your number. Yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing to do with this or what we say. Uh series ten. I think it deserves its spot yeah. where it is, be- uh, because of that finale. Nardole. B- better, it- better in series 10 yeah. than in any other series. But then in series 10, you've got the mystery box of who's behind the door. It's obviously Missy. Oh, it's yeah. Missy. Oh, you've got the, the uh, Rona Monroe story in Eaters that series. Eaters of Shite. Eaters yeah. of Shite, yeah. Um, Which is really bad. Mm, but Bill's great. Bill's great. Um, yeah, it, Billy's it, great. It's, it's a crime that we didn't get another series of Bill because she was really good. And considering... And with Peter, because Peter really found his feet, I yeah. think. By so, this point, he is... You're like, right, this is your Doctor. This is the thing. So Series 8 is like, well, this is the Doctor I think I want to do. Yeah. Series 9 is, I, I don't know what this is. Yeah. Series 10 is, there we go. Yeah. And Bill is the companion for him. Very much so. Uh, and, it, and the university thing is really cool. And it's funny to sort of think there was a, you know, there's a period for Peter Capaldi where he, you know, was so grateful for having Jenna Coleman around with, a, with him that he was like, you know, oh, I want you to stay on for another year. And that w- works against him, really, yeah. because yeah. Waiting in the Wings is a companion who isn't a bloody know-it-all and has, you know, can have a bit of a bit of back and forth with the Doctor, mm. a bit of cheek and a bit of banter. Um, and what's really interesting is that initially, at the start at least, M- Pearl Mackey and Peter... Yeah, apparently they weren't. There's a bit of, there's a bit of friction, friction there on um, set. And, uh, but it doesn't come across on screen. No, not and at all. And I think they come across naturally a better pair yeah. than Jenna and the Twelfth Doctor. I completely agree. Uh, and, I, and I think Clara. that whole thing about him being on Earth, mm. you know, I think you could have done a lot more episodes of him... <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> I'm still blind. Oh, fuck that shit. <laughs> I, that just, I, I just forgot all forget, about it. Forget that nonsense. Until that second. <laughs> I was like, what's going on? <laughs> um, 
other than that madness, you know, I think they could have done more with mm. him being on Earth and... Uh, I don't know. I mean, but 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 it's a good position to put him in, and and also and I think he works as a teacher. He works, yeah, so yeah, good. as a luminary, as somebody who is imparting information to people. Yeah, he has the authority, and with Bill kind of looking up to him as this sort of like figure. Yeah. But then she's also got the sort of she's got the ace thing about her. Yeah. Where it's like I'm going to bring you down to earth a little bit. Yeah. Um, Not yeah. all. I don't think he's necessary. No. I think he's he's fine. I think he is an element too many. I think he was just like, oh shit, let's put Matt Lucas in because everybody loves like, Matt Lucas, so let's keep him on board for a bit. Honestly, I think any of those stories would would work probably better without him. Is uh, Matt Lucas the new series chameleon? Yeah. Well, he's a bit of a canine. He's a bit of a canine. You know, he's a bit of a, a bit mm. of a tag along. Yeah. Well, but... you've got to say it. Yeah. Stay in the TARDIS. Stay, stay in the TARDIS and flick a couple of buttons. And yeah. the whole, like, Android thing, there's bits falling yeah, off of him, is, is a like, bit oh, like, oh, why, man? Yeah, like, you know. If, you're gonna, if, if all he's going to be, like, he might as well just be a sentient AI on the TARDIS yeah. at that point. You yeah. Know, but um, he doesn't necessarily get involved in the action necessarily. Yeah. He, he, he is just canine. Yeah. But then I think, yeah, Series 10 was like the moment where I was like, wow. You're, 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 you're getting it. You yeah. Know? This is like the season 25, 26. The yeah. The new series Doctor Who. Absolutely. Where you're like, oh, next year, it's going to be You're going to hit your yeah. stroke. Yeah. And then it doesn't happen. Yeah. And then you get here, the best regeneration story, or best regeneration moment, I think, uh, oh, w- um, where the Doctor dies yeah. on the battlefield and says, oh, I, I hope it'll be stars. Uh, yeah. And you're like, oh my God. This is it. And then you end up with uh, a load of Christmas crap. And then twice upon a time happens yeah. and it goes into detail. Yeah. Oh, you're not putting it down no, there. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> but it should be there just for twice upon a time I mean, existing. twice upon a time. Ugh. I mean, I still, my head canon is that that is it's a, it's, regeneration it's, it's a fever frenzy. dream. Yeah. I, I, I really hope that somebody makes that canonically true. I, because it's the only way in my head that I will accept that having yeah. happened. And I really, really hoped that the novelization yeah. was going to allude to that, but it didn't. No. And I cried. Who wrote that? Was it St- Stephen Wright? Paul Cornell wrote that. Oh, Paul the, Cornell wrote that. The thingy. Paul, if he had any sense, <laughs> he would have done that. Okay, right. And now we come on to our most recent Doctor Who. This yeah. is going to be really interesting. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a series 11, I mean, 12 yeah, and 13 it. apologist. So I am going to have to be hands off for the positioning of these next wow. three. Well, so we aren't going to agree. No, not worse than series nine. I'll put it, I'll put it in the middle. So I, th- okay. I think 11 okay. goes between six and nine. Okay. Um... I have to say, in the in the sort of grand scheme of everything we've spoken about, series eleven. I think I think the thing that series eleven can be criticised for the most is that it is the safest. Yeah. Out of everything that we've got on this list. Yeah. And it, it, it and it plays like, it the most straight down the it middle. It feels like they shot their load when they cast Jodie Whittaker, mm. and then they were like, and now we have to make a series. Yeah. Now what? Right. What 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 does this, what 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 yeah? What do we do now? What what it's does this, like what prom- story implications does that have? Like the promotion came before the, sh- yeah. the show. Yeah. Sure. Um, um, yeah. What's in that? I mean, yeah. So we spoke about Rosa a couple of episodes ago, probably being a bit overrated. Uh, Woman who fell to earth is okay. Cool. Well, yeah, but it's the is it the, is it the weakest of all the. Series openers for a new Doctor? I mean... Would you take it over Deep Breath? I'd probably take it over Deep Breath. I mean, I would only take it over... No. No? Really? I mean, well, it's difficult because I would take it over Deep Breath because it's shorter than Deep Breath, which is a bonus. Yeah. But... Is this Deep Breath an hour? Deep Breath is fucking... Feels like eight hours. (laughs) It goes on forever. Um... (laughs) The trouble with Deep Breath, Deep Breath is just a bit of a mess mm. until you get to the Peter Capaldi stuff towards the end and yeah. he gets to do Be the Doctor. And when he comes into it, the story lifts and you're like, ah, here we go. Yeah. And I'm quite, and it's fine. Um, whereas with this one, you know, I don't think much of a, 
as Doctor Who, generally speaking, anyway. And I don't think there's really much yeah. for her to do here, really, other than make a sonic screwdriver out of a couple of spoons. Um, and the baddies bullshit. I will. I, okay, I will. I will admit. Even though I don't necessarily agree that this is the case, I yeah. think the general consensus is that series eleven, everything is doesn't really twitch above uh, a semi. <laughs> it doesn't really twitch above a sort of like five out of ten. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's all very straight down the middle, very vanilla. Nothing's yeah. You know, crazy outside Where's the it? box. Where... You haven't got your Daleks. You haven't got your world enough and time. But you I, haven't got your human nature. But I also think that's commendable. Or your it was, school reunions. Or no, even I, I, like your... But your, I, I still think it's commendable that it was able to sort of stand up on its own and do its own thing. But... Uh, I would... I would... Because I don't think there's anything offensively bad in it as Series 6. I would put it above Series I mean, 6. I would put it... Uh, personally. There's no monsters in it. Pitting. He's fucking in it for five seconds. He blew, blew the bloody budget. Uh, the uh, Kablam men. Poor man's Vok robot. But it exists. It, you know, <laughs> it, is, it is a villain. Okay, so you got Pitting, Vok robot postman, um, Tim Shaw. Yeah, who appears in two stories. Who's real, yeah, which uh, is mad. The frog. And uh, <laughs> uh, Mark, is it Mark Eld Eldon, Elton, what, wh whatever his name is. The guy in um, uh, It Takes You Away, who's in the, the, the red mist <laughs> oh, zone. Yeah. Kevin the, Eldon. The, the, oh yeah, him. Yeah. He's not really a baddie. He's just a, an impish side character of But there was supposed to be a villain who looked fucking cool, who got cut. Yeah. The man with the uncut foreskin face. <laughs> yeah, yeah, great. Um, uh, why did they cut that? No. Uh, yeah, one, I would love why to... Why did they cut that? Why did they cut that? <laughs> uh, the only other one is the toilet roll monster from the ghost monument. The ghost monument, yeah, the rags. No, the... Yeah, is that what they're called? <laughs> I fucking know. The fucking rags. <laughs> and Jack's toilet roll. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. string. Um, okay. Um, off the top of my head, I can't think of any other monsters from that series. Um, so, but do you agree with it? It's better than series six. No, because I think series six has got at least a couple of good episodes in it. Okay, okay. I, I, that's what I would put. Because I mean, you've got like series six. You've got stuff like the God Complex. I think the series. Okay, yeah, yeah, is yeah, really yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so I think for that alone, and like you've got a really good creature in terms of the silence. Sure. I don't think anything. Okay. Well, I'm going to at least salvage Jodie Whittaker's era above a D. Right. And I think that maybe, you know, okay, this isn't like a, <laughs> this isn't a massive <laughs> upgrade, but I'm going to say, is series 12 only just slightly worse than series eight? Yes. Yeah. I can't actually remember what is in series 12. Remind me. Let me consult my phone, Matthew. Uh, well, we've got the master two-parter. We've the got spy, spy fall. Where it crumble? Has he got that? Uh, <laughs> I'll crumble. Yeah. Um, um, series twelve. Oh dear. This is giving all the crazy racist Doctor Who fans plenty of fuel to explain why it's shite. Orphan fifty-five. Shite. Nikola yeah. Tesla's Night of Terror. That's Pretty good. good. Fugitive of the Jadoon. Pretty good. Yeah. Praxius. Pretty good. Wait, what's that one about? Uh, when they turn into crazy oh, bang. No. Yeah, it's good. It's not. <laughs> can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you loud and clear. Uh, the haunting wait, of wait, wait. Can you hear me? Oh, that's that finger, finger fucking. Yeah, man. finger bang. Finger. <laughs> no. Uh, finger band man. <laughs> the haunting of Villa <laughs> Diodati. Brilliant. Uh, Ascension of the Cybermen. Uh, that's good. Is it? Part two is not. The no. Timeless Children isn't brilliant. No. Uh, and Revolution of the Daleks. Oh, yeah, that's all right. That's quite good, actually. I quite like Revolution of the Daleks. So, does it, does it tilt into above Series 8? No. No? Not for me. I think, okay. I think, although I did really like Spyfall. Like, I remember the, the end of Spyfall being like, holy shit. Wow. With, with the Master. With the Master and Gallifrey being gone again. And yeah. Then, and I was like, no, that, that's the end of Series... That's the end of Part 2, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and she I was like, wow, what? Yeah. And then I was like... 
well, haven't we done this? Yeah. It, but I think that's the problem. Yeah, it doesn't become... It, that is such a dramatic end yeah. to that episode yeah. that you expect it to sort of be paid off. Yeah. And then halfway through the series, you get a really dramatic whoa moment with the Fugitive Doctor. Yeah. And then that never really gets paid off. Yeah. But it's like they're laying the foundations to do something massive and then it, it kind never, of... It never, it never happens. Yeah, it kind of does, but it kind of doesn't. It's, yeah. But it's, 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 it's bittier than with Stephen Moffat where it just doesn't ever happen again or he tells you... Shut up, you're fucking stupid for thinking yeah. I was ever going to pay that off. Yeah. Whereas Chris Chibnall just sort of doesn't quite get, get there. Get there, yeah. You know, it's not as offensive. Yeah, it feels like the whole Gallifrey thing and the Time as Children thing is like, look, Jodie, you're a really good dramatic actor mm. and you didn't really have any acting worth bothering doing in the first series. Do you want, no do you want one scene where you open a door, see something and burst into tears yeah, and then shut the door know, and never talk we'll about give, it again? We'll give you something that you can really get your teeth around and then even that isn't quite yeah. there. Yeah. You know, it's not on the levels of Christopher Eccleston bursting into tears whilst Sonic in some wires in yeah. End of the World um, because there's no weight behind it. It just sort of, this thing happens and you're like, why? How? Huh? Yeah. yeah. Um, something else should have happened. I think she should have gone to the future and seen like Yaz get killed by the master or something. And then she has to travel for that whole series knowing that her friend is going to die. And she's like, well, I, I, you know, is it going to break the laws of time but if I do it? We're just fantasy booking at this stage. Well, know? yeah, like, I mean, any, anything would have been good. Yeah. If the tax man has come along and knocked on the TARDIS door and said, uh, are you the doctor? Uh, yes, well, according to this, you've had, uh, <laughs> you had 12p in your bank account back in 1970 or maybe the 80s. We're not really sure. And the but amount surely, of interest... I was going to say. Yeah, the compound interest is built up. And uh, you now owe us a lot of money. You owe me this police box now. Yeah. You're homeless. Yeah. Oh, bloody Tories. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I, I, I'm only going to slightly rebel internally that I think series 12 is better than series 8. Right. But I will allow you... What's in series 8? Into the Daleks, good. The, let, Cyberman, let the Cyberman finale... Is all right. Uh, Death in heaven and dark water. Yeah. Uh, time heist. We already talked about mm -hmm. Robert R Robert of Sherwood. Robert, Robert of, Sherwood. of Sherwood. Yeah. <laughs> Robert of Sherwood. Whatever the hell it's called. Forest of Sherwood. Sherwood robots. Robots uh, of Sherwood. Into there we go. the forest of the night. Oh my god. <laughs> Listen. Yeah. The caretaker. Uh, Kill the moon. Uh, I mean, that anti-abortion storyline, bang. <laughs> uh, Mummy on the Orient Express. I like that. Flatline. Oh, I love that. Into the Forest of the Night. I don't love that. Dark Water. Mm -hmm. Death in Heaven. Mm. And then Last Christmas. If last there was, Christmas, I, I gave, gave you, you my heart. heart. If there was any way of fusing these two, yeah, I think that would be um, right. Poor mangled child of a Doctor Who. If there was an incest child we could create, it would be <laughs> series twelve and series eight. Fine. Uh, oh, that rhymed. You're a poet and you didn't know it. But thank it... you. Um, sh sh do you want me to move it up? What? Uh, is nah, series... leave. Leave. I mean, they're both as bad as each other. Okay. I think that's at least in my head. Series twelve is slightly better than series Fine. eight. Fine. I'll let you have that. Thank you. Seeing as I plunge series eleven straight into the bowels of. Feculence. And then, <laughs> and then finally, <laughs> Matthew Toffler, we've come to the end. It's series 13. Remind me what that was again? That was Flux. Doctor Who Flux. Ah. Uh, it will save every one of us. No, it won't. It ends shit. <laughs> um, but then we, that also includes the specials. Which, Eve of the Daleks, yay. Legend, Legend of the Sea of Vols, ah. Uh, uh, Power of the Doctor, ah. Uh, I, I can't even give a fake orgasmic moan about it. No, um, not even a, sea, a, a, a turtle. Ah, is that what the sea devils <laughs> sound like when they come? Right, series 13. Wow, we have hit a whole new level of smut. smut yeah. I think... I mean, they have babies. We've seen them in the trailer. We've seen them in the trailer. Um, can, I, can, I be, can I be fair? Can I... It, I think it's better than series 12 because, it, you know, it's made... It under, is better than series it's 12. It's made under COVID. The serialised nature of it is grand. Village of the Angels is in there, which is great. 
Um, I mean, I just put it above series twelve, like in front of series twelve. So you, you mean I think it would be. I think it's better because you've got a good Santoran story. You've got the good Angel story. Yeah. You've got the Dalek story. Even the Daleks. Um, what else is in there? Power of the Doctor is, uh, is, is it's a monolith. I, you know, it's not, it's not my cup of tea in terms of a Doctor Who story. No. It feels like it's Chris Chibnall saying, I think this is what the 50th anniversary should have been. Yeah. Um, but... It gets a pass just because Paul McGann and all the old Doctors come back. Series 7 doesn't have that. That is, that is true, but Series 7 probably has a more consistent run of half good stories. Does it? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. My brain stopped working. It's but, all rubbish. But no, Don't no, no, it's all no, rubbish. No, it's not. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I think that series 13 is, is a level better than series 12. I don't think that they can be considered on the same tier as C. I, I, I think, we, yeah, I think for, for just... audio listeners, again... <laughs> S tier series one, series three, A tier series five, series four. These feel like a fucking year ago that we did these. <laughs> B tier series two, series 10 and series seven. At the moment, C tier is series three, series 12 and series eight. D tier, series six, series 11 and series nine. I, I, think, that, I think that series 13, oh fuck, I don't know. It's so hard. I just remember the disappointment. Again, Flux had so much promise. But I enjoyed watching series 13 more than I enjoyed watching series seven. From, from memory. Week to week, it felt like it's hard something because, was happening, you know? Because series 13 has got Mandip Gill in it. But series seven has got Jenna Coleman in it. Fine. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, it's not about that. It's about the... Hey, I'm just trying to find any footing of where one might be better than the other. So series 13 is, is, is on... It should be B tier. I think it should be. Do you? I think on principle... Nah. I think my problem is I don't like the Doctor. Mm. And I prefer Matt Smith to Jodie Whittaker. So for me, fundamentally... Okay. I prefer the main character in one series compared to the other series. Mm. That's, but I, I mean, I, 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 am, I am happy I for you to saying. put, I'm, I'm happy for you to put series 13 into B. Um, but, but don't think about me. If it was you, would it stay where it is? Oh yeah, it's going to be there. Okay. Because, I, because you know, series 13, I just think, it's doing something different, and I yeah, think oh yeah. that it excels think, at the serialized thing. Yeah, there's and some I think good for that, it should there. be commended. It's got the cliffhangers. Yeah. Um, forget about chocolate and oh. all that with the Sontarans. I, 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 Eve of you the were Daleks. doing so well. I know. And then, it I know. Went, and then it goes, isn't it? It's like, Eve oh. of the Daleks does something with the Daleks. That, that story is better than any Dalek story in series two, series 10, or series seven. Um, Hang on. Even the Daleks is better than Doomsday. And for, for the Daleks? Nah, bollocks. It's what I want to see the Daleks doing. Fuck me, they're going around London killing everybody in uh, Series 2. I know they're CGI, but they're, do, they're still doing it. Series 10, yeah, but they're not fine. in Series 10. I don't know. I just, Seven, I, like, not I, I prefer close quarters Dalek stories than I do... Right. Massive invasion Dalek stories because I mean, that just gets boring because er, they're invading something every week. Yeah, and and then to see them do something that's a bit more personal. Even the Daleks has some weird fucker who like keeps a trophy. Yeah, that's that's true. Of, that's each true. Of the girlfriends he's murdered. That's true. There's a whole other story waiting to happen where Isley, Ashley B's character gets murdered, but and it's all the Doctor's fault. Series thirteen's got better guest stars in it than series seven. Ah, it's got David Warner in Series 7. Uh, he's dead. Never. <laughs> um, I don't know. Um, oh, man. Oh, put, put it she, where you want to put no, it. No, 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 let's keep it where it is. You sure? Yeah, yeah, fine, fine. That is, that is what it is. Okay, so for, for the listeners at home, it stays the same. S tier, Series 1 and Series 3. 
uh, A tier Series 5 and Series 4. I'm not sure we're wavering on any of the positions that we've put no, them in previously. I, th I, think, I think that all looks pretty good to me. B tier Series 2 and Series 10 and Series 7. C tier Series 13, Series 12, Series 8. D tier Series 6, Series 11 and Series 9. Um, you know what? As much as I love individual stories in the stories, in the seasons that are sort of lower down the list, like yeah. series 13 and 12 and 11, yeah. um, I'm, I can't argue too much with that placing. Yeah. If, if there was a way yeah. of, putting, of putting series 13 between C and B, You'd do that. Because, just because it's doing something different. Yeah. Just because it's serialised. It, it, that is the bridge between yeah. those two tiers. Fair we, really, what we need is a, is another tier yeah. for that to go into, really. <laughs> uh, but, you know... They need to invent a new letter. <laughs> we're playing... <laughs> because there's nothing after D. We're playing by the rules here. Yeah. And I think it's, it's only fair to kind of keep it as it is. Well, it's quarter to ten in the evening. And we've just spent the last... God knows how long. I need some. I need some dinner. Have you Have you eaten? Well, I've had a bit of food before I came out, but I, I've, I've had like <laughs> two cans of gold. Like I need a. I need something to eat to wash you it all down. Uh, but no good having any food because now we're going to sit down and we're going to do a tier list with all of classics. No. <laughs> I think what we should do. Maybe we should do a tier list. Should we do all of Tom Baker's series? I think that. Yeah. That could be interesting. Well, rather than. All 26 seasons of yeah, that would classic be, but, but we'd be sat here for about nine hours doing that. <laughs> I, that. Maybe we should do... Because, you know, Tom is the monolith. Yeah. Tom is the big daddy. Yeah. I think maybe we should do every Tom series... Ranked. Ranked. Every fourth Doctor series ranked. Because yeah. it's not like any other Doctor has the the wealth of mm. stories to sort of yeah, dive into. Yeah, the, and the, the, the range of tones between seasons mm. are, you know, So quite Gra extreme. So Graham Williams at the bottom. Yeah. And series 12, series 14 at the top. And 13. Oh, yeah, and series 13. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, you, I mean, there's, 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 there is no need <laughs> to do the video. The video. There and you then go. season 18, somewhere beneath... Somewhere in the middle. Yeah, B.A. Yeah, something like that. Well, 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 that was that video. That was quick, wasn't it? I hope you enjoyed both of those videos <laughs> that we did there for you. Um, yeah. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. Um, mucho appreciato for liking and subscribing and doing all your favouriting and all those things. Yeah. You can find the Patreon in the description down below. That keeps us doing this while we're on other sides of the planet because by the time you're watching this, yeah. we are uh, 20,000 miles away from each other <laughs> trying to make things work. And, uh, He's had and breast implants, I think. You went like that. <laughs> trying to make things. Trying to make things work. Malleable. Try, trying to finally. Is that where you're going? Trying to finally accept who I am. Yeah. Um, thank you very much for watching. And uh, if you want to have a go at this tier list, I'm sure you'll find the link on the on our Twitter. And we'll see you later. Bye bye. Bye bye.